Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at how to find the order of convergence of a numerical method given some data calculated by that, from that numerical method. So it says here, uh, in order to demonstrate the order of accuracy or order of convergence of a numerical method, we can calculate the error of solving a problem that has an analytical solution. Uh, so for example, our numerical method calculates the gradient of sine x. Uh, so it uses uh, values of delta x, various sizes, and we compare, this is, the, the, the numerical method calculates the gradient of sine x, x equals zero, and gives these results. Uh, it should give one. We know that the gradient of sine x is cos x, and the cosine of zero is one. Uh, so there are some errors. These are the errors. Uh, given that Given these errors, we know that the error is proportional to a constant multiplied by delta x to the power n, where n is the order of accuracy. We've worked out from numerical analysis that the order of accuracy n should be 2. Uh, have we coded it properly? Have we done the analysis properly? Is it really second order accurate? So from this, um, uh, given two values of epsilon and two values of delta x, um, we can eliminate a and find a value, find n. Uh, so we can write down, we can assume we've got two values, so we've got error 1 is equal to a times delta x1 to the power n, and error 2 is equal to a times delta x2 to the power n. Now we want to eliminate a in order to find n. Epsilon 1, epsilon 2, delta x1, delta x2 are known from here. So we can do 1 divided, this equation divided by that, that equation. Epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 2, and this will eliminate A. Delta x1 divided by delta x2, all to the power n. Now to find n, we can take the logarithm of both sides. It doesn't matter what kind of logarithm. Log of epsilon 1 over epsilon 2 is equal to, now as I take the log of this side, I'm going to take that power there and put it outside the log, n times log of delta x1 over delta x2. I'm now going to rearrange it to find n, so n is going to be equal to that divided by that. I'm also going to rearrange this, log of epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 2 is equal to the log of epsilon 1 minus the log of epsilon 2 divided by this this part log of delta x1 minus log of delta x2 so now I can assume that that's delta x1 and that's delta x2 so epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 I can plug some numbers into here and I will get uh, so between these two n equals 1.99, that's close to 2. And if I use these two values for epsilon